I just bought this gaming computer for $90. I got it on OfferUp, and yes, there are some quirks, such as the 24-pin power connector is just missing, but the guy seemed trustworthy, and for the parts in the system, it was a hard deal to pass up. As most of you know, $90 for a whole gaming computer is not a lot of money. On a brand new build nowadays, you could easily spend closer to $1,000, $1,500, $2,000. And yes, for that price, you'll be getting the latest parts and their respective performance, but FPS is not on a linear scale. $300, $500, $1000 builds all have their place in the market. Which is an interesting statement, because later on in this video, I'll tell you how you can get a high-end gaming PC for almost free. But before we do that, let's talk about this build. For $90, that means there has to be something wrong with it then, right? I thought the same thing, so the moment I got home, I got to work solving this power issue. I didn't want to wait a couple of weeks for a cable to get shipped to me, so I created an unconventional 24-pin power connector from some very old broken power supplies that I had. So with the cable installed, let's see if this computer even works. Luckily, it not only worked, but it worked great. The performance of this machine was incredible for just 90 bucks. The boot times were reasonable, windows felt smooth, and gaming was great. In many titles at 1080p medium-ish settings, I was hitting 60 FPS, and some games even ran closer to 100 FPS. This system has no right being this good. But before we dive deeper into this build and tell you how you can get one too, we actually do have one glaring issue. This computer is filthy. Now, this isn't the worst I've ever seen a computer, but even the medium amount of dust in a system can reduce the performance. If your fans or coolers are dusty, they could be a lot less efficient, with less surface area and airflow leading to higher temps and reduced FPS. On top of that, since the system hasn't been cleaned in a while, I can safely assume that the thermal paste is old and dried out. So, for better looks and performance, we're going to be giving this system a deep clean and a much needed revitalization. While we're cleaning it up, let me introduce you to each of the parts in this build. If you couldn't already tell, this system is pretty old. For the CPU, it's rocking the Core i5-4670K, a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU from 2013 that pales in comparison to new ones today. To cool it, we have the classic Intel stock CPU cooler. If you put this thing on a Core i9 today, you would probably start a fire, but since the old i5 uses a lot less power, it works out okay. For the RAM, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR3. Yes, I said DDR3, not four or five. The good news is the 16 gigabytes of capacity actually matches most gaming PCs nowadays. In the graphics department, we have the legendary GTX 1060. This GPU topped the Steam hardware charts for years, only to be suppressed recently by the GTX 1650 and RTX 3060. It was originally released back in 2013 and was a staple among the budget community for many years. Sadly, this is the 3GB variant, which is a lot less viable today than the 6GB one, thanks to games just eating up VRAM. To connect everything, we have the MSI Z87 motherboard. It's in quite good condition, has good I.O., and it's a little valuable since old motherboards are harder to come by. For storage, we have a 240GB SATA SSD from PNY. Now, this won't break any records for speed or capacity, but it'll get the job done for now. For power, we have the NEX 650G from EVGA. Surprisingly, this old PSU is fully modular, and even has an 80 plus gold rating. The 650 watts may not be enough to power a 4090, but with this i5 and a 1060, we have more than enough power to work with here. For the case, man, this is a throwback. We have the Cooler Master Cosmos SE, a high-end case released back in 2013. And although it has some ancient artifacts, like a whole stack of hard drive bays, this case still has a lot of potential with the amount of internal room. It could easily be used again for a semi-modern budget build, or turned into a great server or a NAS. The airflow may not be competitive with newer cases like the Torrent and the Landcool 3, but with the right fans and the right layout, I'm not concerned about any of that. After a ton of additional cleaning and dusting and rewiring and replacing the GPU thermal paste and removing really weird components and more, the system is clean. Well, clean enough. I removed a lot of dust and debris from it, and that's as good as it's going to get. But now, let's talk about how this build performs. 
Again, I paid $90 for this entire computer, which is a fifth, a tenth, or even a twentieth of what you could easily spend on a new build today. But for that $90, I got a great little gaming machine. Yes, this thing won't be able to play the latest AAA games at the highest settings, or even simple games at 1440p or 4K. But for 1080p gaming at low, medium, and sometimes high settings, I was getting between 40, 60, even up to 100 FPS. For any esports title like Rocket League, CSGO, or League of Legends, this thing will absolutely rip. And if you're into emulation, don't even get me started on the performance this build can bring to rendering a 20 year old game. If you paired this machine with a cheap 1080p monitor, you'd have a great little setup for less than 150 bucks. So while we're on the topic of money, let's talk about the price of this build. I looked up each of the individual components on eBay, OfferUp, and Craigslist, and if I took the time to part it out, I could get at least $170 for it. If I decided to sell slower and at a bit higher price, I could get at least $200 for it all. Now that puts us in an interesting predicament. Do I keep the build as is for the $90 I paid, or do I take the time to part it out and get $200 cash, where I can then turn around and buy a $200 used gaming PC, which would be 50, 75, 100% faster than the current one. I think the choice is clear, and that brings me to the title of this video. You can get an incredible gaming PC for cheap. It just takes time and a little bit of effort. Let me explain. For almost a decade now, I've been building and selling computers, from the highest end $5,000 entirely custom water cooling build to the lowest end $100 GTX 750 Ti builds. I've done it all. And one thing that I've done time and time again is trading up to a high-end PC. If I took this current $90 computer and sold it all for $200, I would now have $200 cash. But if I then buy a $200 computer and do the same thing again, I would have $300 cash. $300 becomes $500, $500 becomes $650, $650 becomes $900, there's really no practical limit to where this can end. If you really are strapped for cash and you only have $100 or $200 to spend on a build, putting in that time to flip a computer can be incredible. Once you get to $500, $700, $1000, you can stop there and have an absolutely incredible gaming PC for only really the initial investment of $90. Or if you're like me and you're always looking for the newest and shiniest hardware, you keep going. The limiting factor to where you and your computer end up is you. So whether you want a $300 gaming experience, $500, $1000, or just a $90 one, know that with a little bit of time and a little bit of effort and an entrepreneurial mindset, you can basically get it for free. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more content like this. I've built and sold hundreds of computers, and I'd say that I've learned quite a bit about it that I would love to share with y'all. Cause I get it, seeing a $1500 or $2000 gaming build on YouTube is really cool, but for most people that price is entirely impractical. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed this adventure. If you liked it, make sure to click that like button and subscribe down below, I'm trying to grow. Thanks for watching, I'm Spectral Tech, and I'll see you next time.